In today's video, we're going to learn about magnets, and specifically how we represent magnetic fields using field lines. Now, a magnet is any material or object that produces a magnetic field. The most common type of magnet you'll see is probably the bar magnet, but they actually come in all shapes and sizes, from these simple horseshoe magnets to the entire Earth itself which is basically one huge magnet. What all magnets have in common though, is that they have two poles, a north and a south, and they're surrounded by a magnetic field. In order to properly represent these magnetic fields, we use something called field lines, which are effectively arrows that you draw around your magnet from the north pole to the south pole. And it's important that you can draw these lines for your exam and that you put the arrows in the right places. The easiest way to do this is to draw at least one straight line going into the South Pole and coming out of the North Pole, then a pair going into the South Pole that are slightly curved, and a similar pair coming out of the North, and then lastly, some that loop all the way around from the North to South. As well as these basic lines, you could add in some more arrows if you want to, in the same style, but you generally don't need to for exams. And the last thing you want to do is double check all of your little arrows on the lines are pointing the right way, because we want our arrows to go out of the north and into the south. The benefit of representing our magnetic field with lines like this is not only that it shows us where the field is and which direction it's acting in, but that it also shows us the relative strength of the field in different places. Because the more dense the field lines are, which is to say the closer together the lines are, the stronger the magnetic field is in that area. For example, we can see that the field would be much stronger over here by the North Pole than it would out here to the side, because this one by the pole has lots more lines going through it. Now, in real life, we obviously can't see the field lines, and magnets aren't always labelled with a North and South. However, we can easily find the poles and field lines by using a compass. This works because the needle of a compass is actually a tiny bar magnet and will always line up with the field lines of whichever magnetic field is put in. And it will also always point towards the south pole of a magnet. So if we put our compass over here near our magnet, we could draw an arrow in the same direction as the compass needle. And as it's heading towards this magnet, we know that this must be the south pole. Whereas if we place the compass over here, then our compass needle would be pointing away from the magnet. So this must be the magnet's north pole. By doing this over and over again in different places, we would eventually recreate the same pattern as our field line diagram from before. So to get our field lines, all we'd need to do is join up our arrows. And if you want to see how this works in real life, we've linked a live video of it down below in the description. The last thing we need to look at is how to show the interaction between two different bar magnets. As you know, if you push the north poles of two magnets together, then they'll repel each other, which is what makes it hard to squeeze them together. We can see why this is if we draw the field lines between them. It's this interaction of the magnetic fields that creates the force of repulsion. On the other hand, if we flipped one of our magnets around and brought two opposite poles close together, then they would attract one another because all the field lines would be going from north to south and so be attractive. Anyway, that's all for this video today. So hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.